Hi, it's Mary Beth Shaw. I'm back with another Almost Live, and I wanted to share travel tips with you. I have done this before. However, I was preparing for international travel where I was going to be checking a bag. This time, I am traveling by air, but I'm gonna carry on and that's a different kind of animal. So I thought that you might be interested in seeing how I prepare for that and what I do to minimize the supplies that I carry on a trip. And it, you know, gosh, the whole travel thing, there's like, there's something to be said for just getting in a car, I am telling you because it's like when you're in the car you can have all your stuff and you know when you're flying it's just a different ball game and especially when you're going to carry on like I am this time so let me turn the camera and I'll show you what I've got packed uh, it's a few days I'm filming this on a Monday and we don't leave until Thursday so God only knows what I will add to this collection between now and then, but I feel pretty good about the things that I have laid out. All right, here we are. I am not using my, um, my peg and all this time. I just felt like shaking it up and doing something different. And I do adore my peg and all, but I thought I would do something different this time. So I have two small little bags. These are um, really pretty small. This is like six, a nine inch. And so this is maybe a 10 or 12 inch. So these are pretty small, pretty flat. And then this one is by Kipling. This is another company I adore. I have their backpack and their things are very lightweight, very well made, and you usually get a monkey. And um, this one is this monkey face. He's a crazy monkey. Look at the hair on this guy. I love this monkey. So I'm very excited to be using him because I haven't traveled with him before. All right, let's just look at the Kipling bag first here. And um, I have minimized my, I've tried to minimize, minimize my supplies, good Lord. I had just gotten this set of these jelly rolls and I kind of liked all these colors, so I put them all in. I have a few brushes here. I have two rounds, an eight and a four for watercolor. I have a flat shader. Um, this is for acrylic, a four. And then I have a, um, a monogram, which this is a, a, a brush to make more linear things. And I have a triangle brush at home that I'm going to add to this batch. I didn't have it here with me, so I need to add it to this. All right, so the jelly rolls, this. And then these, I don't know, these are the Le Pen, and they just write really, really little. I mean, I don't know if you can see how small that tip is against my skin, but they write very tiny, and I thought I wanted to do some actual journaling this time in little tiny parts that I thought I would then add into my journal, probably tip them in or whatever. These are two of the, um, the Stabilo Alls, a black one and a blue one. This is my Jerry's pencil. It's called um, Jumbo Jet Black. I like it because it's big and fat and you can kind of scribble on things. This is just a regular pencil and this is a Signa White. All right, so that is pretty much, but I like how they lay flat and I like how when you get to your destination, you can just have it open like this and your things are readily available and viewable so you don't have to, you know, repack or anything. This is a piece of plastic to put on my table when I get there. I always pack that because I just feel like I need to. Um, my favorite core watercolor set is this one. Um, 
I think it's called a mini something something. It doesn't have the name on it. It's on my Amazon shop. I have had this for years and I just cleaned it today. <laughs> this was like previously couldn't even be seen. And I left these paints here because there was pretty much and I thought that that would be nice to have those there still. So I'm bringing that core watercolor and then this is by um, Ocean Paper Watercolor out of Hawaii. I love well, I had it open just a minute ago, and I must have done something strange. Okay, let's sh I'll show you. I don't know if this was a set or if this was one that I put together on my own. I can't remember, but you can see the colors up here. And I am bringing this primarily to complement the golden. The goldens are super transparent. These have some opacity, a few of them. And these also have a few different uh, different hues like this light blue and also when you consider the opacity and the transparency of the goldens this is going to bring a lot to the table so that's exciting i brought one sponge to use with stencils tiny scissors tiniest ones i have little baby ruler metal ruler you know what i have my little little one here i think i'm going to put that one in this is um from the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. It has all of the holes for all kinds of pencils. Now, I only have the fat one and the regular one, but it's nice to be able to accommodate sharpening with that. All right, so that is that container. I'll put the plastic in there. And it's got room. I mean, there's definitely room if I need to put more in there. All right, this one has my Faber-Castell water container. This is really nice to have, a collapsible water container. Love it. Glue stick and four gouache colors. Again, it's to add opacity if I feel like I need it in my work and um, just a few colors. I don't even know what that brand is or if I could find them again. I got them somewhere on clearance and they just are a few great colors like a little... Um, pale green, pale, pale, pale green, and pale pink. Anyway, so that's that one. Now in this one, these are all little Basquiat cases, by the way. I also got these in Amsterdam. This is my sprocket that I use to print out tiny photographs on. And I'll just bring out this whole thing here and show you everything that's in here. And I have a whole box of sprocket paper, which I don't know if I need that. I may just load up the inside of the sprocket and call it good to go. I have some PNs, Micron PN plastic nib pens. These are permanent black pens. And then I have this. This is a Uniball Signo in black. These are for writing, journaling, whatever. I have this tape that I got from uh, Didi Ketron's Wow um, Wow Studio. It's this vintage tape. I just love how it looks. It's really cool. Um, I've ordered it several times. Look at the color of it, and it just looks vintage. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. I really like it. It's not a washi tape. You have to cut it with scissors, but I love it. Now in here, look at this little case. It came with this Basquiat set. And I put my little 4x4 four four stencils in here. I had to kind of, um, I had to kind of roll them to get them to go in there because the case is the exact size of the stencils. But I really wanted to bring it. So I have brought stencils that I know I will use or that one's got something stuck to the top of it in that triangular part. That's hilarious. So these are, um, M014, M081, M260. It's a suitcase. I love that when I'm doing travel work. These are off of some ATCs. I honestly can't even tell you which ones, but I love traveling with ATC size stencils, my faves. This is an Ann Barnes here, another 4x4, M331. This is Repetition, M080. I have that memorized because I 
probably need a new one of these like every year I use it so much. I know this is a Natalie ATC because it's one of her beautiful pattern designs. I think this one might be Carolyn Doobie and I think this is a Pam. I don't know what the number is though. So I'm just bringing a few stencils. Nothing big, right? Nothing big here because I'm keeping it minimal. And if you kind of roll them like that, then they'll just lay down flat as can be in that perfect little container, right? Okay, so then I brought some collage stuff. Um, and as part of the collage stuff, I took paper. This is that, you know that medical paper I like so much, that tissue, I always talk about it. It's in my Amazon shop and I'm just going to be a pusher and say, you got to go buy this stuff. It is not expensive and it's very robust and sturdy for, um, you know, for tissue type paper. It's kind of like between deli and tissue. Honestly, I'm probably not going to buy any more deli. I'm just going to keep with this. I still have some deli I need to um, finish up, but anyway. So what I did was I took black gesso and I took two Carolyn Doobie stencils, S261 and S263, and I used a sponge and stenciled with black gesso on this. So now I have all of these words that I'm going to bring with me. Now I'm just going to tell you, I already know what I'm going to journal about because it's my husband and I's 30th anniversary and I'm going to be doing a little anniversary journaling. So there were a few words on here that I really wanted to use. I wanted forever. I wanted shine. Then of course love. So I just thought I'd bring all these words because it's a really nice way to have words on hand to explore and you don't have to bring all those stencils. These are just a few white plain index cards. I have some here. They just start out white, okay? In fact, I think I'm going to throw these extras in. And these I was just using the other day to mop up some wet paint. And I like keeping them on hand because I can draw on them. I can do journal writing. I can just do whatever I want on there. I have a little piece of tape that I did a gel plate cleanup with a hunk of napkin, a few little random parts. This is a, um, a packing tape transfer from a magazine that I just uh, glued down to this piece of paper. And it shows the number 77 in there, which I was born on 77. So. And it says elevations under there. I glued it on a, um, like a architectural drawing, so that was cool. Brought a few cards in case I want to paint those and this is so cool so it's uh, from October 1993 which is when John and I got married and it's from his little notebook and it says wedding 10-9 that's pretty cool <laughs> and um, then here are um, I don't know what this is some kind of radio drawing but I you know I love all things that look like that like industrial architectural that kind of thing a few more parts these are my under papers from when I paint and so these are all the collage bits I'm bringing but this I found this in my stash it's from the Royal Hawaiian which John and I went there when we were dating how bizarre that I saved the key card from all that time ago. It cracks me up. So anyway, this is my collage stash right here. And then this is my for my daily practice journal. So when I get back, I will film my daily practice journal, what I've made while I was gone. But these are the collage parts I'm taking. And then I'm taking this notebook because I um, just have the idea I want to do maybe a little little drawing or something. All I've done so far is draw some spiders in here. And anyway, so I guess that's pretty much it. And I'm sure you can all see how this greatly minimizes 
what you need to bring on your trip. I mean, it makes it so easy to just pile up these things and I put them in my backpack with my Kindle and, and my purse in my backpack. And then I have my luggage, which is my other carry-on. So I have a backpack and a little piece of luggage and I am good to go. I hope this helped you if you're taking a trip. I, um, if you have any questions, give me a shout. I will report back on my journal pages after this trip is over. And thanks so much for watching. At the time you're watching this, I will have already been on the trip and been back from the trip, but I think that these travel tips are hopefully relevant for any travel you might be taking if you were in a carry-on situation and want to minimize what you have. So, I mean, you can see this is just not that much, right? It's a real small, small footprint of materials and I think it's going to serve me well.